Hello and welcome. My name is Wigbert Knabe and I want to show you a Microsoft feature introduction for the UDS service authentication. A look at a bit background on which Microsoft module affected and about the standardization of that UDS service. The UDS service authentication is supported by the Microsoft DCM module. From UDS service point of view, the service ID is 29 for that service. Might be interesting for some of you. If you look where it comes from, the UDS service authentication was introduced with the latest edition of ISO 14229-1 UDS in 2020. And consecutively, it was standardized in AutoSAR in version 4.4. So let's have a short overview and a look on service authentication. How does it work? From UDS point of view, there are three main use cases for service authentication. The first use case is security concept, authentication with PKI Certificate Exchange or APCE. The next use case, also another security concept, is authentication with challenge response. And the third use case is Transmit Certificate, which is used for general purpose certificate handling. What I want to show you today is concentrating on the security concept authentication with PKI Certificate Exchange. And this is standardized in AutoSAR and also in the MicroSAR DCM module. For UDS experts of you, on UDS level, those are the services 29 with subfunction 0, 1, 2, 3, and 8. So, what's the authentication with PKI for? The authentication with PKI Certificate Exchange allows the tester and ECU to authenticate via certificates. And the UDS service 29 is used to exchange a certificate between tester and ECU in a unidirectional way where the tester authenticates at the ECU, so the ECU know who it's talking with, or even in the higher security level, bidirectional tester and ECU authenticate themselves each other, so even the tester knows that it's talking to the correct ECU and nobody can inject the data in the middle. And what are the main advantages of a certificate-based authentication? Well, the access rights are inside the certificate, for me, this is the most important security gain. So it's no longer a static rights assignment in the ECU, but in the, the access rights are part of the certificate and a certificate may expire or you may issue it only to certain parties and restrict it to certain vehicle identification numbers or vehicle lines or anything else. So it gives much more control to the OEMs who can execute what. And the overall security concept, of course, is much in, much better. It's increased compared like to static um, approaches like we had today with security access. So what is inside a diagnostic certificate? Diagnostic relevant content and certificate is roles. So it's an OEM defined set of roles, typical examples, production, after sales, um, development, or so on. The DCM checks at runtime against the DCM sided configuration, and the services are assigned inside the DCM to some of those roles. Another aspect from certificates, what is for diagnostic relevant, is a whitelist. In a whitelist, uh, you can extend the services that are allowed in a certain role temporarily by further services that are written and part of the certificate. And the last element is a target identification. So a certificate can be really limited only to a certain vehicle identification number. So you can show that person can manipulate the system or the ECU, but only on that vehicle, not on other vehicles. So increased security. And next step, let's have a look on configuration in Microsoft DaVinci Configurator. The authentication service requires the following ECUC configuration. First of all, the existence of the UDS Service 29 authentication itself. Configuration happens via DCM DST service and DCM DST sub service. And next step, we need to assign roles to service instances via the configuration. So from high level on DID level, read, write DIDs, IO control, routines, 
services uh, or service IDs in general or services with subfunctions and also for user-defined fault memory elements. And the third expect is the configuration of a certificating KM and DCM reference edit. This is done via DCM DSP authentication connection certificate ref. So let's have a look from the tools from Vector which are involved in the configuration of this. Everything starts with Candela Studio where you can configure DIDs, for instance, we will see here. Here we have a, a DID to read and write a spare part number. And obviously, you're not really interested. People are overriding the spare part number. So you limit this to maybe manufacturing only. Only a manufacturer uh, certificates you are allowed to write the spare part number. And in a second step, in DaVinci Configurator, you import the CDD files or the Candela Studio document, and you automatically get your DCM configuration done by the vector toolings. That's all for service authentication and action in the Microsoft DCM. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'm happy to see you on the next video here in our channel. Thank you. Bye-bye.